So welcome everyone to this somewhat unfortunately delayed webinar that we are hosting for IUC. I hand it over to, to uh, Holger to speak first. Thank you, George. Uh, thank you very much and welcome to all uh, participating here in this first webinar of the International Urban Cooperation Program, a program of the European Union. Um, uh, this is um, focusing on planning a sustainable city through smart and inclusive mobility. Uh, obviously, uh, sustainable mobility is one of the biggest challenges in urban development in the 21st century uh, for various reasons, both for uh, environmental reasons, we all know about uh, air quality issues in urban areas, Definitely for climate change issues, we do know that um, uh, transport and mobility is one of the biggest contributors uh, to uh, uh, CO2 emission uh, and uh, for sure also for the connectivity and social equity in our urban areas. Um, it is um, a corona of different, um, uh, different experiences that we want to bring uh, to your attention in this uh, first webinar of the International Urban Cooperation Program. Uh, and as George uh, already informed you, uh, we start off by a couple of challenges. Um, that is usually the case uh, with the teething problems uh, in, in a series like this one. But nevertheless, we do hope that we can offer you uh, a quite interesting table uh, with a good menu uh, of uh, experiences from around the world. Um, I would uh, just for the for the uh, pr uh, for the proceedings. Um, George has already informed you that uh, we will record the session, so please uh, be aware that this is uh, happening. It is also to your benefit because you can always get back to the recordings then later on um, and see if you can uh, uh, make good use of uh, the experiences shared. Second, for those uh, that would like to speak up or speak up, um, do so only uh, uh, when we come to the point for asking for questions. Uh, mute yourself as long as you do not speak. Unmute yourself uh, when you speak. Um, if you want to uh, come in with your questions um, for our questions and answers session, then please do so in writing. We will collect um, as we go. Uh, your input, um, and we will um, obviously uh, uh, um, uh, center uh, the questions and answer sessions in our discussion uh, around your questions, uh, and the panelists will be happy uh, to share uh, all their insights and information around your, your requests. Um, finally, um, that is for the speakers. Uh, obviously, we will need to uh, put you under time pressure. We still intend to uh, conclude the meeting by 5.30 in European time, uh, meaning that uh, we will definitely um, uh, make sure that everyone can uh, can get back to their to their work or start their evenings, uh, depending on where you are in the world, because this is truly an international um, uh, uh, audience that, that we have uh, today here with us. Um, I would like to ask uh, my colleague, uh, George Stiff, uh, to present uh, the International Urban Cooperation Program uh, in a nutshell. Uh, George is uh, working in the International Urban Cooperation Coordination Unit, uh, and he asked me to make uh, you aware that you can stay connected to the International Urban Cooperation uh, Program uh, via our website, via social media, uh, and if you want to stay connected, then please uh, go to support at iuc-europe.eu, uh, and uh, we make sure that you will receive all information related to the International Urban Co Cooperation Program, which is very much focusing on sustainable urban development support, but I leave it to George uh, to give us more insight on the International Urban Cooperation Program. George, the floor is yours. So once again, I have to apologize uh, for the delay, but I hope that we will have all of our speakers uh, in the rest of the session. 
but I'm going to, before we talk about mobility issues, I want to give you a uh, something of an overview about what it is that we do in IUC. So what is IUC? It's a part of a long-term strategy from the European Union. It's a three-year program from the European Commission focused on sustainable urban development. And we aim to enable cities and regions to link up and share solutions with each other. And we also support international agreements such as the EU Urban Agenda, Sustainable Development Goals, and the Paris Agreement. And we have a couple of objectives uh, that we work on, which is a long-term strategy uh, for sustainable urban development. We focus a lot on capacity building as well, uh, cooperation, and also market opportunities. And as I mentioned, these larger agreements that we support. And we specifically focus in a couple of key regions around the world, specifically Asia. That would be China, India, and Japan, Latin America and the Caribbean, especially Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, and Peru, and North America is Canada, Mexico, and US. And we also have a few other countries which are involved in some of the activities, for example, in Asia and even a few in Latin America. But these are our main uh, countries that we work at. And I just wanted to show you that we are the IUC coordination unit. We are based in Brussels. And there's the North American unit, which is based in Mexico City. The Latin America unit is, is based in Brasilia. The Indian unit is in New Delhi. The Asia unit is based in Beijing. And there's a Japanese unit based in Nagoya. So we work on three components. First one is cooperation between cities. So this is a European city cooperating with a city from another region. We also support the global covenant of mayors and enabling climate action at a local and regional levels. And the third thing is we also try to instill a sense of cooperation between regions. By this I mean subnational regions, provinces, things like this, European regions and regions in Latin America only. So first off, I wanted to explain a little bit more about the city-to-city -city cooperation that we do. And cities that join, they commit to cooperate with each other, they learn good practices, they share experiences, they exchange with their global peers, they showcase their own best practices, and they are able to implement their vision and make it into a reality. So cities that uh, commit, they uh, cooperate uh, for at least 18 months with their international peers. And we actually, of course, intend that these partnerships last even longer. But we, we cannot guarantee this, but we try to, uh, to uh, set this in place. I see that now our, our speaker from Chihuahua has joined, so that's a good sign. And hopefully we will have our one remaining speaker from Habitat here once I'm finished with the presentation. Uh, the other thing I can say about what we do with the cities is we try to facilitate from planning into implementation. So we're building on previous initiatives like the World Cities or Urbact, and we help cities to develop local action plans that meet the context for both cities and, and aim these towards pilot projects. And there's a lot of exchange, not just between one city and its pair, but also between other cities involved in our program. So we have this uh, sort of a, a mix of cities around the world. And you can see that we have more than 120 cities already involved in our IUC program coming from 30 different countries. You can find more information on our website. Within Europe, we have 45 cities, which are already paired up so far from coming from 21 uh, countries. The most of them are in Asia, so China, India, and Japan, but also a lot in Latin America and in North America as well. These are the current parents. We still have some parents which are still coming online, so there will be even more. And there's a variety of topics. These largely align with the urban agenda of the EU. What we do in the, for the Global Covenant of Mayors in our second component is that we are helping local governments to accelerate their own initiatives, which are inclusive, just, low emission, and climate resilient. And what we do is supporting the Global Covenant of Mayors uh, is to set up uh, offices where they didn't exist before. They might, be, they might have existed at a national level, but we also encourage to work regionally as well, but also 
making sure that those covenant of mayor's initiatives which existed before are able to be more consistent and coherent with the others. And the final thing that we do is knowledge sharing. So we have a help desk where we can exchange resources and adapt context. So for example, using a resource from one region and adapting it for another, mapping out stakeholders, organizing governance structures that are coherent across the region, engaging cities and other stakeholders, and, and we also do a lot of online communication, involvement at in public events, and we are a liaison with the Global Covenant Secretariat. The final component we work on is interregional cooperation, and this is about creating added value. So we want to transfer knowledge into value, and we want also especially to emphasize social benefits, not just economic growth. So there are a couple of dimensions that we work with, technological, organizational, and the regional. And one of the things that we do here in Europe, and we're trying to spread this concept, is the idea of regions as smart specializers. So a particular region can find its own strengths and weaknesses, and they find the stakeholders that they most want to involve, and together they work to identify what are the priority areas for that region, improve the knowledge flows and the relationships and the value chains within that region, and therefore work towards together towards a realistic target. So for example, some region that maybe makes glass and they also have some industry for electronics, maybe they want to put that together and work on photovoltaics or smart windows or something like this. So for regional pairings, we so far have 12, which are, are uh, running at the moment. They only run in Latin America, and it involves 13 uh, total countries. So we have Mexico, in this case, is included in Latin America, Colombia, Peru, Chile, Argentina, and Brazil. And then you can see on the other side where the European ones are so far. But there's still a chance for any of you uh, who work with regions that you can also uh, join the regional program. There's still eight more pairings still to be fully defined. So there's still a chance for some of you to join at a regional level. This would, this would be at, uh, I, I believe, a, a nuts two level uh, using the European system. Final thing I want to say is that we connect the EU with the rest of the world. We have our website. It's available in multiple languages. So the main website is done in English. This is for international, but also the North American page has an English website. There's Mandarin Chinese, Hindi, Japanese, Spanish, Portuguese. We have news, access to resources. We have knowledge sharing platform for IUC members. And we also have other resources available in newsletters. This webinar will be uh, available there. It's the first webinar. We have some case studies and some publications which are coming soon. And there you can find how to join our Twitter, how to join our mailing list. You can email for more information, and this is at the website. Uh, this was, a, sorry, a duplicate slide, alternative version. So I uh, just want to thank you, and if you have any questions, I encourage you to put that into the chat on, on the right side, and then we will collect and we'll try to answer as many of your questions as possible. So hold good. Wonderful. Thank you so much, George, for this uh, introduction to the International Urban Cooperation Program, which connects uh, ourselves here in this webinar. Um, I encourage you, uh, uh, again, uh, to make use of the questions and answer sessions. You can always, uh, session, you can always write and type your question in the Q&A uh, in the chat, and uh, we will collect and get back to that uh, by the end of this session. Um, and George, if I may ask you to get back to the um, agenda so that we can have an overview of what is to come now. Thank you very much, George. Um, uh, for the next um, step, uh, obviously we had foreseen Stefan Schwarz um, of the city of Karlsruhe, uh, who is with the planning department of the city and also the co-chair uh, of uh, what in, in Europe is called the, urban, uh, the European Urban Agenda Partnership on Urban Mobility. Uh, but due to the technical uh, challenges, we will uh, put him uh, to the end of the session uh, and still hope that we can uh, solve uh, the, the problem. 
uh, in any case, um, uh, this will make good sense because also we have um, a speaker from UN Habitat, uh, Debashish uh, Bata uh, Shahi, um, who uh, is also working for the urban agenda, but at UN level, and I think it will make good sense to pair them towards the end of this session. Uh, we would like to start off by some city experiences, and I suggest that we will have as a first speaker uh, Juan Camilo um, Gomez from the city of Medellin in Colombia, um, uh, who will speak on how to use actually uh, sustainable mobility uh, for driving a city towards an equitable uh, and sustainable uh, development. And uh, he will share uh, some very interesting experiences from the city of, of Medellin. Uh, we are very much looking forward uh, to uh, hear his speech. Juan, the floor is yours. It's it? It's okay? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, perfect. So the idea of, of what we call an equitable and sustainable mobility comes also um, obviously from the violence uh, process that we have so many years ago that comes from narco traffic and all the war all over our country. As you know, uh, Colombia is a tropical country that for many years uh, leaves all the, the drug mafia and all the drug issues all around the city and Medellin was the main, main uh, sector of the country that really, really lives all along a really difficult time. So the idea of what we call uh, an equitable and sustainable mobility is to say that we are in all the center of, of the country right now. This, this is what we call um, uh, the valley of Abura with almost uh, three, year, three million of people living all around the, the territory. And what we call is that it's a conurbation of 10 municipalities all around the territory. So that means that Medellin is the central, the central municipality that agglomerates all the, the needs, all the services all around the territory. But to, to have that in mind, that means that whole, we have a territory with a really, really high slope all over the valley. And that means that all over that years in the 80s and in the 90s, where the violence was the result of a really difficult issue all over the country, means a lot of housing that was even uh, not planned um, in the territory. So that means that it was really difficult to get uh, people included into the city and was really difficult to promote a real social inclusion. So uh, our city from, from the 20s to the 90s, um, almost as you can see, was rearranging all the territory and was promoting uh, and a real huge scale occupation of the territory with almost, as I was telling some minutes ago, with three millions of Habitants. So that means that we passed from the violence in 1991 to the, a really, really real poverty process with almost the 50% of our population that lives in, in real poverty. And that means that we, we were in a, in a real period of fear in which people really doesn't want to, to go to the city really doesn't want to to be in a plaza, doesn't want to even to travel all around the territory. It was really difficult and the idea of an equitable and sustainable mobility was to create um, a sense of hope, a sense of uh, promoting the territory of, as a part of a lifestyle. And the idea today is that we can a mission, uh, a future of trust, where people can live together all over the territory and can even promote a more sustainable development of the territory. In that case, we promote um, uh, also uh, a real strategy of how the mobility can be uh, an excuse to make a, a very or a more sustainable 
city. And as you can see, for example, in this picture, this is a traditional day uh, so many years ago in our city, and normal highways with a lot of vehicles, with, with a lot of taxis, with a lot of uh, public transportation like buses, and also with a lot of motorcycles. So the idea to promote uh, a different kind of transportation was based in the multimodality. And the multimodality based also in a social basis. A social basis that means that the mobility is uh, must be designed for people, must be designed for humans and not for cars. So in, in that case, we said that the cable cars uh, was one of the principles to generate quality of life, to connect and to integrate people. Uh, for example, uh, before the, the implementation of the cable cars, uh, normally the people that live in the in this kind of slopes uh, that we call also, for example, like in Brazil, the favelas, here we call them comunas, uh, people normally have to take two buses to get to the center of the city and almost um, could take in that time one hour and one hour and a half. Uh, one hour and one hour and minutes. Right now, with the cable car, we we could transform all the territory and not only promote uh, the connection uh, with only one travel. And the idea was to promote a real inclusion process in which the cable car could transform all the territory and could rearrange all the housing and could rearrange all the habitat of the territory was. Uh, planning it in the future. So the idea was that this kind of corridors uh, was um, understand it like uh, uh, points of connection and counter for excellence. So the idea is that if you promote a, a new cable car system, a new metro system, a new tram or BRT, BRT system, the idea was not only to travel from A to B in the territory, the idea was to promote a uh, place in which in which people can encounter, can talk, can just stay uh, a middle hour to take an ice cream, to take some water, and to just stay in the city to promote a, a real inclusion of the territory. So that means, as you can see in, in the picture, that was not only the transportation system, was not only the technology that permit us to to get to a very high slope in the territory and to connect uh, different technologies all over the territory. The idea was to promote new spaces for people and in that kind of spaces to promote the encounter. And also that promotes um, in, in that way uh, a reduction of the segregation and permit us to, to the social fabric. So the idea in that case was to transform um, the city into an example of appropriation, an example of a uh, way of living, and not only to promote um, a transportation system. The idea was to promote a cultural system based in the way in which we can move all over the territory. So the idea or, or the challenge was 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 that exactly uh, passed from the operation, the traditional operation and the traditional service uh, based in, in going from HP to promote a, a life, a quality of life. So the idea was to create a massive transit system uh, more democratic to to allow people to get all, get all over the territory and also to create a social benefit. The idea was to to say um, a real a real uh, quantity of time all over the process of transportation, the territory, and the idea was to promote um, more counters all over the transportation system or the plazas in the transportation system that the time that you normally get into the transportation, for example, into the train or into the the buses. So that's what based it in, as I was telling you at the beginning, that the pedestrians, the people, and all, all the non-motorized uh, 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 modes 
was the basis of that kind of transportation. And even the public transportation was in the middle of this kind of pyramid to promote all the integration between the traditional modes like motorcycles and cars, like the cargo transportation systems, and all over the pedestrian and the cyclist. So the idea was to promote uh, an inverted pyramid of the mobility in which the public transportation was in the middle and was the, the real connection between all the activities and the lifestyle of the territory. Finally, this kind of interventions promote a new integration of the cultural process. For example, um, this is a, a plaza of the metro system that promotes all the Botero sculptures all over the territory and also promotes uh, the participation of different entities like the policy, like cultural uh, promoters, and even like the transformation of different social implementation structures. And here, for example, we, we can see how a uh, cable car system promotes the transformation of the territory. In the left, uh, we were from the beginning of the transportation system, like in the first place, the, the cable cars initiates his operation, but the real pro process of the social fabric, of the promotion of the social fabric was the base. What we can see in the left is how the public space uh, connected to the transportation systems really will connect hold the pedestrians, connects all the human activities with the transportation systems. That's the issue of how to really get a sustainable and equitable mobility. And for example, uh, as I was telling you, uh, then uh, comes the, the artistic uh, process in which with the transformation of, of the territory, also the people um, began to, to understand how the the cultural transformation and the social inclusion can be also done by giving color, by giving some uh, attractions in base of, of their transformation in the territory, and that they can be part of the transformation, can be part of the solution, and also they, they can be uh, the social transformators of the territory. This is uh, also another example of how we in the 50s uh, used to have a traditional tram system and in 2014 uh, we implemented a new tramway system that promotes, as you can see in the image of the right, the people uh, that can combine with all the, the transformation. So I was telling you, this is, this is more than a mobility system, it's a place to promote citizenry, uh, it's a place to, to promote new values, it's a place to, to encounter, and also it's a place to promote the civic culture. That, that is the main, or, or what we can say that is the DNA, the basis of all the transformation, is not only the technologies, is not only the transformation, the physical transformation of the territory, is the culture that we can promote and we can develop all around the territory by promoting a real sustainable system. So as you can see, this, this is one of the last uh, pictures of how the culture and, and how the transformation of the systems promotes the, the cultural process and appears like a, a different scenario in the territory. So that, that's all that, that's what we call a, a real sustainable and, and transformation process but based, but based not only in the technology, is not based only in the multi-connectivity of all the different systems, is based in the social fabric and in the social transformation that a transportation system can develop in the future. So that's, that's part of my presentation. I hope you really enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Juan, for an, uh, an inspiring uh, presentation. I should say it is uh, even more inspiring than the Colombian team performing currently in the World Cup uh, uh, in Russia, which is already quite uh, impressive. But what you tell us uh, here is um, a wonderful storyline of how to use um, mobility as an entry point into an 
uh, a true integrated uh, urban development that uh, takes into account um, uh, particularly also the aspects of social cohesion uh, and the transformation from uh, a city that um, experienced violence in the past uh, and mistrust uh, now into uh, a city that is prosperous uh, and, and uh, developing uh, in a very sustainable manner. So uh, thank you very, very much for this uh, experience. Uh, I think you deserve um, a, a break for the moment uh, and take a, okay. take a breath. Um, okay. uh, obviously, we will collect uh, the questions uh, in the chat, uh, and uh, should there be questions general to you, we will get back to them uh, in the end of this session. Okay. Um, thank you, Juan. That said, uh, I would like to um, continue our journey, and we actually have a pair uh, that is now uh, presenting from two sides of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, we uh, have here a pair that is um, uh, involved in the uh, International Urban Cooperation Program. Uh, as per George's uh, introduction, uh, we have a couple of city pairs, and uh, we, in this case, it is actually a city pairing with a state. Uh, and I would like to uh, warmly invite Lorena Calvo of the city of uh, Zaragoza in, in Spain uh, to introduce uh, how actually uh, the two cooperate on sustainable urban mobility. After that, we will have Cecilia Ola Caballero, uh, who will present on uh, some experiences with public transport uh, in the state of Chihuahua in Mexico. Uh, so first, uh, up to you, Lorena, to introduce uh, the cooperation that you have between Zaragoza and uh, Chihuahua. The floor is yours. Uh, there. Just uh, please tell me when you when you wish me to switch sides. Okay. Well, you can switch now already. Okay. okay there we go. So the, uh, sorry for the delay. I will. Uh, I'm Lorena Calvo. I'm in charge of the international relations office in the city of Zaragoza in Spain, and I will introduce uh, our work together with the city of Chihuahua in Mexico. Uh, the city of Zaragoza and the city of Chihuahua have been working together within the European Initiative, International Urban Cooperation, since November 2017, where we met each other in the kickoff meeting organized by the, the IUC uh, Secretariat in Brussels. After that first meeting, uh, the methodology that we have followed, led by the, the office in, uh, in North America, uh, has provided us with the opportunity to do two technical visits. In March 2018, the delegation from Zaragoza visited our colleagues in Chihuahua and in May 2008, uh, they came to Zaragoza. Both technical visits had as main goal to be able to get to know in first hand the main local projects from both cities. And we focus on urban sustainable local projects when the delegation from Chihuahua came to Zaragoza and vice versa. Uh, we had the opportunity to exchange good practices with the officers and the leaders from the different uh, urban sustainable projects in each of the cities. After the technical visits, uh, we, have, uh, we have decided to cooperate in three main areas that uh, have been set up. First of all, of, of, of these three uh, areas, it's the strategic planning, city vision. The second one is going to be mobility, and the third one is going to be economic development. As the title of the presentation is, is based on sustainable urban mobility, I will explain shortly this item and its proposed activities. Uh, the cooperation on mobility issues that we are going to work with uh, the city of Chihuahua, we can highlight uh, the following topics where our cooperation is going to be based on. First of all, uh, 
we are going to improve the non-motorized mobility model, the public space and the pedestrian paths and cycle paths in our cities. Also, we are going to experience uh, exchange experiences in the management of uh, bus rapid transit. And also, linked to these topics, we have planned these activities. We are going to organize a workshop with officials from both cities on non-motorized mobility, urban identification, and accessibility. And also, we are going to provide technical support for the development of a fair model for the Chihuahua BRT and provide technical support for the creation of the Chihuahua Traffic Control Center. Also, we have talked about the possibility to establish a, a webinar with the manager of the tramway public company from the city of Zaragoza in order to provide information and technical support to our colleagues in Chihuahua. Uh, also, I would like to highlight, uh, as, um, as Cecilia is going to talk to you in a more uh, concrete, uh, uh, atmos uh, in a more concrete way, way our cooperation, uh, I would like to highlight that we are going to provide capacity building to, to some of our colleagues in Chihuahua, and we'll be holding a training session in Zaragoza. Uh, it is a, an annual training session focused on uh, general management in public administration, and we'll give the opportunity to our colleagues in Chihuahua to come to Zaragoza. And also, I have been told that uh, after our technical visit in uh, Chihuahua, some market opportunities uh, have been opened, and a business delegation from the city of Zaragoza will be visiting in the following weeks the city of, of Chihuahua. And just to finish, before I give the floor to Cecilia, uh, and link to the IUC program because it's not just the technical visits and the exchange of good practices, but also we are planning to attend together the Latin America Smart City Summit, and there we'll focus on mobility, sustainability, and public space issues, and also we'll be participating in the European Union Open Days in October 2018. And now I would like to pass the floor to Cecilia, who is in charge of mobility in the city of Chihuahua, and she'll be able to explain uh, more about our mobility cooperation. Thank you very, very much, Lorena. Uh, actually, also for uh, doing part of my job and in introducing already Cecilia. Um, uh, while um, uh, George is uh, switching um, also here the uh, presentation ball, uh, I would really very much like to thank you for uh, inspiring about uh, the opportunity that is in the International Urban Cooperation Program. I think you very lively uh, have uh, introduced some benefits uh, for both sides of the Atlantic, for Zaragoza and Chihuahua. Uh, I do not know if Mexico and Spain will cross paths in the World Cup, but uh, if, if that is uh, come to happen, uh, then uh, I will hope that uh, they uh, present themselves uh, on, on the pitch in the same cooperative manner that you have uh, in Zaragoza and Chihuahua. Uh, for now, I would like to uh, open the floor for Cecilia Ola Caballero. Um, uh, being for urban development in, and ecology in the state of Chihuahua in Mexico, and she will uh, present on comprehensive public transportation systems approaches in Chihuahua. Thank you. Arturo. Um, well, let me introduce with me is, uh, of course, Cecilia Olaga from the state government, but also Carlos Hernandez from the implant from the City uh, Planning Institute. Also is with me Sergio Flores in charge of uh, uh, urban administration from the municipality. And uh, Jose Antonio Perez, uh, also director from uh, urban development at the state government, among other colleagues. 
Uh, well, now I'm going to introduce uh, Cecilia. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for this kind invitation to share the plan of sustainable mobility that Chihuahua City has for the coming years. This morning, I will share the presentation with Carlos Hernandez. We share some comments about about the uh, second stage of sustainable urban mobility system. So we conceive sustainable mobility as an articulator of urban life. If, uh, so if we wish a sustainable, competitive, innovative, smart, and human city, Chihuahua has many difficult uh, situations like urban sprawl, um, uh, social and spatial separation, and uh, and we have two stories that precede the this this project that uh, this morning I share with us with you. Um, the first story is the urban plan uh, 24 for city, and the second story is a uh, uh, urban mobility system for. Chihuahua City, and this is the second stage. The first, uh, uh, the first uh, main route of city uh, was built in 2013, and now we are working in the in these uh, these two routes, uh, called Troncal Two and Three. Um, one of the main avenues of the city is uh, called Periférico de la Juventud. Um, this avenue is, is selected to build the second main route of the RT system. The, for many reasons, uh, some one of these is the section is enough to allow the um, allow the lane for buses and um, have the this avenue have the possibility to be in charge with the private vehicles and and give access to adjacent, adjacent properties. Um, another reason is uh, this avenue have legal intersection to establish a connection bus stop to bus stop, and the sidewalk of this avenue is enough for design to bus stop between other good characteristics of this. Currently, there are uh, 75 feeder routes that represent um, 1,618 kilometers of coverage and an average lane by route of 22 kilometers. And this story is detected um, the speed of average operating in the system is ranged between 15 and 20 kilometers per hour. Uh, another uh, situation is the waiting times for people in the bus stop or terminal, ranging for 15 minutes to an hour. And we have an indice passenger kilometer of, um, about 4.3. And we have an average time frequency between buses, uh, about 15 minutes. Uh, and the street observed is uh, 452 uh, buses. And in, we can see in this table, um, uh, in the current situation, we have a 75 number of routes. And with this new project, we just have a 65 number of routes with a total length. Uh, oh, is uh, 1,384 kilometers, and this uh, this new project um, uh, will be possible to have average time frequency between buses uh, just seven minutes is the the meta <laughs> this is goal and. Uh, the estimated buses to operate the system is 358 buses. Uh, this uh, is important because we 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 get 
some benefits, for some important benefits, uh, like a reduction of 30% in, in total of buses. Uh, we get a 25% and average profitability of goods, and we get a reduction of 70% in average travel time per users, and we get uh, operating speed up to 25 kilometers per hour, and approximately we get a reduction of 30% in operating cost. Uh, we get to a reduction uh, to a 75% in dioxide carbon emissions to the atmosphere. This is a very important goal because uh, we are contributing to reduce the effects of climate change <coughs> in this new uh, system for Chihuahua City. This, oh, this diapositive show the complete project. Um, in first place, we see we can see the now the actually route in operation. Uh, this goes to uh, this goes from north terminal to south terminal. Uh, this actually in operation is just the one that the city has at this moment. Like a part of this project, we have, we have the in first place the extension of North Terminal North, to North. Terminal called Pistolas Menezes. This is an extension of, of road line, and this, uh, this, this uh, section will be constructed in the first stage of this second part of the whole project, um, this auxiliar route. And we have uh, nine feeder routes that are operating now that are redesigning with this new project, and we implement a new feeder route. We will uh, intermodal Stolas Menezes. We have the executive project for this um, this, uh, this intermodal station. Uh, this, is, this intermodal station is important because confluence the foreign and urban traffic in the same um, in the same point. Uh, we we will will to the maintenance uh, building for buses and storage yard uh, in the part in the north part of the city. In this stage, we will view the second route. View. Moment. This uh, color, which is the main route of the public system. Ah, now, now we can see the second important part of this project with red color. Oh, sorry. Red color. We we show the second troncal route for Chihuahua, and is is uh, this goes from North Terminal to West uh, Terminal Station in in west of the city. Uh, we we will choose an auxiliary route is uh, with color um, blue. We can see all auxiliary routes that will be implemented in this second stage of the of the system mobility for Chihuahua. And we can see with color uh, green uh, the feeder routes, and we can see with color yellow the circular route. This is a circular very important for the city. And we have with the blue sky color the diameter of routes that goes the people to west to the east of the city, and this is the complete project of this second stage. And you can see it's very ambitious project because we pass from a one a main route to a three main routes and many others uh, routes that uh, that works like um, all uh, integrated 
healthcare system for the city. It's very important at this moment that the city has a, a transport control center. It's very important uh, because this uh, is needed to uh, function like a Cecilia, can I kindly remind you of the time, please? I see there is ah. still a couple of slides to go, uh, and we uh, have run late. So if you perhaps take another three minutes, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Ah, okay, okay. The main part of the system and the core of the system, the approach, uh, all the important infrastructure that is part of the system. Uh, you can see now the this is the, the, the project component for a view uh, section to get a second stage. Of now, the the five uh, five bus stops that has uh, this uh, this uh, figure shows the project of the bus stop uh, in in five points of uh, Avenue Periférico de la Juventud. This is the, this is some components very important in this project. We we want a connected city, accessible, safe. Integrated, still efficient, sustainable, and inclusive. Uh, because of this, we have an elevators and focus on pedestrian and, of course, motorized and non motorized uh, ways to move. The station tip A. This is the bus typical. And this is the bus. Um, we need 260 buses, uh, about 100 passengers, for the Tronca, La Auxiliar, Circus, and the diametral uh, routes. Yeah. And for the Auxiliar route, that is a very important part of the project. Uh, we need two eight buses. Uh, to 100 passengers. This is the technology that the buses is needed in order to better control for the fleet. This is the technology on the station. It's with the people, and this is an image that shows the control center. Very important for uh, efficient uh, function of the project. This is some renders uh, for the infrastructure. This is the intermodal station. This is the intermodal station for the west of the city. Is uh, of the of the for a store. Thank you very much for your kind invitation, Carlos. Do you want to? Hello, this is Carlos. I'm in charge of the planning office at municipal and city level, and I just want to say a few comments. Uh, I think we recognize three main challenges for this project in the future. The first one is investment. We need to learn how to get more investment for this project in the future, and also how to learn from the experiences we are having because we are planning to, to update our city plan next year, so we need to learn fast uh, how to improve the uh, mobility system and how to en enhance it in terms of non-motorized uh, mobility systems as well. So. Let's see how you see program how allow us to learn more experiences from this project, and uh, we will see. 
uh, that's it for me because I know we are short of time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, to the two of you, Cecilia and Arturo. Um, uh, there, there is uh, one question, obviously, that comes to mind immediately listening to you, uh, which is uh, if you experience already that the number of passengers served has increased. Uh, so if you can give us a very short response to that. About what? The passengers about what? Sorry? The number of passengers uh, that uh, are served or, and have used uh, the the uh, public transport since you started the project is has that increased? I think is I I don't have the exactly uh, amount, but I think it's like fifteen thousand passengers per day mm -hmm. in the actual situation. And of and course, I I hope. The, the increase of number of passengers when the whole system is, uh, is complete. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing uh, this experience and uh, the wonderful project that you have started. Um, uh, we uh, obviously will try to follow the uh, further developments uh, in Chihuahua, uh, potentially also in one of the future webinars. Um, now we have uh, two more uh, speakers and experiences. Uh, I very much appreciate that we close up to the end of the, uh, the session, this webinar. Um, um, I just want to make uh, people aware that we will uh, extend by 15 minutes uh, to alert you uh, and to accommodate uh, the two speeches and presentations that we still have in front of us. Um, but we will close sharp uh, 5.45 European time. Um, for now, I would like to ask if we can connect to uh, Stefan Schwarz and uh, look at the European um, uh, um, Urban Agenda Partnership uh, on urban mobility before we again get back to the global level uh, with Debashish uh, in the final uh, presentation. So let me uh, briefly introduce uh, Stefan Schwarz, uh, working with the uh, planning department of the city of Karlsruhe in Germany. Uh, the city is a co-host to the uh, uh, European Union's uh, Urban Agenda Partnership on Urban Mobility that he is going to introduce. Uh, he uh, shares this um, uh, with the uh, government of the Czech Republic as the national partner uh, to this EU partnership. And Stefan, I'm very much looking forward uh, to your presentation of what this is all about. Okay, um, thank you very much, Olga. Uh, you can hear me clearly? Yes, loud and clearly. Okay, perfect. So thank you very much and um, also thank you for giving me the opportunity to shortly present the urban agenda for the EU uh, in general and the partnership on uh, urban mobility as part of the agenda in particular. So I will try to give you a quick overview in about um, 10 minutes about uh, these question, what is the urban agenda for the EU? Um, what are the objectives? What are the main topics we are dealing with when it comes to urban mobility? And um, of course, why do I as mobility planner at the city of Karlsruhe talk about the urban agenda for the EU? Well, um, the urban agenda is not only a new project or network or um, organization dealing with urban mobility. I think it's um, really well covered already. It is more an integrated and uh, coordinated approach to deal with the urban dimension of EU and national policies at um, legislation level. Um, it was adopted in 2016, the two years ago, the urban agenda under the Dutch presidency in the Pact of Amsterdam, recognizing the rising importance of cities and urban areas for the EU and recognizing that uh, cities are facing specific challenges such as air quality, affordable housing, poverty, and of course mobility that uh, cities cannot solve alone. So the urban agenda represents also a new um, multi-level working method, promoting cooperation between the member states, cities, European institutions, the Commission, uh, and also other stakeholders in order to stimulate growth, livability, and uh, innovation in the cities of Europe and to identify and um, hopefully successfully tackle um, the social challenges. 
And this is a really good approach in my view because uh, now the cities are getting more influence and uh, have a place on the table actually, working directly together with the member states and uh, the commission. Uh, the key tools of the Urban Agenda are first and foremost uh, 12 thematic partnerships representing 12 priority themes. You can see it uh, on, the, on the screen. It's about procurement, it's about affordable housing, energy transition, and right in the middle, the urban mobility as a highly cross-cutting issue with many overlapping aspects and, uh, of course, links also to the other op uh, topics and partnerships. Um, the partners of our partnership on urban mobility are these in the red box. We are eight cities, two regions, five national states, and um, you already mentioned um, the city of Karlsruhe is coordinating the partnership work together with the Czech Republic. And that's the reason why I am talking to you at the moment as co-coordinator of the partnership on urban mobility. Uh, what is the focus of the urban agenda and therefore also of our partnerships? We are working on, uh, let's say, findable, uh, finding workable solutions for better regulation, for better funding, and better knowledge, which are the three pillars of the urban agenda. So we are trying to address gaps. We are looking at uh, what can be simplified, looking at how we can uh, dig further into knowledge or knowledge exchange uh, in the urban areas. Um, the key delivery of each partnership is an action plan uh, dealing with these three pillars on better regulation, better funding, and better knowledge. And each partnership is uh, designed to run for three years. The Urban Mobility Partnership runs from 2017, 18 till 19. And now we are right in the middle of our time frame. We are at the consultation phase now uh, with our drafted actions at the moment. So we already had um, EU-wide online consultation. We had outreach work workshops and so on. And the big, big task for next year is then to um, elaborate the actions in detail and then hopefully implement them. So now we come a step closer to the draft actions that uh, were elaborated in working groups on priority topics that are headlined, uh, headlined with the overall objective of our, of our partnership, as mentioned in the uh, Pact of Amsterdam, which is to have sustainable and efficient urban mobility. And the priority topics are, I begin at the end, um, which is the most general view and can also seen as a horizontal working group that is dealing with uh, governance and planning topics. Then we have thematical group that deals uh, with innovative solutions, smart mobility, and we cover the active modes of transport and the public transport um, and multimodality. And so here finally they are, the drafted actions as presented in our draft action plan for the consultation phase. The active mode group elaborated uh, three actions dealing with uh, developing guidelines on infrastructure for active mobility supported by relevant funding. So this action targets uh, especially on those member states who do not have an appropriate national standard for walking and cycling infrastructure. Um, the second action is um, Infrastructure is always one side of the coin. The other is to support the active mobility behavior. So a combination of um, measures linking hard and soft transport policies in a coordinated strategy has uh, mostly the greatest chance uh, for, for success. So this action aims especially on uh, traffic generators such as schools and companies that should be uh, primarily addressed because of the high potential for influencing uh, commuting patterns. And the third action is dealing with the UBAS, the Urban uh, Vehicle Access Regulation, uh, where the European Commission currently receives uh, many inquiries concerning the diversity among urban access regulation themes in the EU and the lack of the harmonization. So the fragmentation of approaches uh, leads to inefficiencies and this suggests there may be a need to examine the various uh, themes to see if any actions could be taken at the relevant level to address such concerns. When it comes to innovative solutions and smart mobility, our partners presented two actions. The first is dealing with the exploration of the deployment of new mobility services such as the uh, mobility as a service approach. And this action likes to ensure that the integration of planning, 
on the one hand and, and uh, services on the other hand is developed collaboratively with local and transport authorities. And the second action we would like to work on is to um, set up a European framework for fostering urban mobility innovation, taking into account that innovative solutions uh, need to be developed and tested and then successfully deployed on the ground. So this is especially a funding and uh, also a knowledge topic, uh, addressing also the heavy administrative burdens sometimes and the low success rates of innovative mobility projects at the moment. And the last slide on the public transport side, we focus on uh, evaluating best practices in convenient access to public transport. So that is a knowledge uh, topic um, addressing especially a new method of analyzing access to public transport that has been developed by the Commission. And that is uh, an important step forward because it allows cities and regions to measure access to public transport in a comparable way, uh, which can help I identify the impact of uh, different best practice strategies to improve public transport, which in turn can improve the decision making at all levels also. And we can't deal with urban mobility without dealing with e-mobility or low emission vehicles in general. So the seventh action would be to scale up innovative clean buses as a first step to break the current dependence on um, the transport sector on oil. So the present action seeks to support the market introduction of clean buses. And last but not least, when it comes to um, governance and planning, there are two actions, one on governance and one on planning. The eighth action is about uh, reinforcing multi-level cooperation and governance. Um, so this action seeks to collect and share examples of practical experiences with multi-level governance and partnership approaches in general that have been implemented on the ground and in urban and in functional urban areas. And the last action, it's about planning. Uh, and about reinforcing the uptake of sustainable urban mobility plans, the SUMs, especially uh, update and disseminate uh, information on the SUM framework at both EU level and in the member states in uh, order to encourage more urban areas to adopt and implement these SUMs. So this was a, the short run about, uh, through the Urban Agendas Partnership and um, we are working on the final actions at the moment so every feedback is welcome, and you can find more information online at the EU Futurium website, or um, just Google it uh, EU Urban Agenda, and then go to the section library. You can also find our drafted action plan. So thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, uh, Stefan. Um, myself, I, I'm involved in another urban agenda partnership on sustainable urban land use uh, and nature-based solutions, uh -huh. and I can clearly see the value uh, in in the um, uh, collaboration here. But also, I do know that it is um, a really a, a truly innovative approach and uh, a challenge to collaborate in this pattern. Uh, and in a multi-level governance perspective, but I mm -hmm. suppose uh, for the international urban cooperation, this is one of the very important features to also understand that cities do not just act inside their own remit, but mm -hmm. obviously they are very much depending uh, on the framework conditions. But the, the case that you make here uh, shows clearly also that cities can and should engage in influencing the framework conditions uh, to their preference. So thank mm -hmm. you very, very much. Uh, Stefan, Thank um, to you. I would like to um, continue here with another perspective, um, which is uh, bring us to the, back to the global level. Um, uh, obviously, uh, the, the, whenever we talk about sustainable urban development, this is connected to sustainable development goals, um, uh, be it in the region, be it in the country, be it in a continental uh, um, uh, agreement like the European Union, but also obviously uh, the UN is very much driving the sustainable uh, development agenda. Uh, and part of that is also uh, mobility. Uh, we do have Debashish Batashayi uh, of UN Habitat here, the lead on the urban mobility uh, uh, program, and uh, we are very much looking forward to hear the perspectives on international cooperation for smart and inclusive mobility. Debashish. 
It seems that Devashish's audio is still not functional, unfortunately. Okay. Um, in which case, uh, very unfortunately, obviously, we cannot uh, continue for too much longer. Um, I would like to um, ask for um, basically, I know he's now uh, muting himself. Uh, so um, obviously, we will share for all uh, the PowerPoints uh, coming from uh, the webinar, including also the one of Debashish. I very much uh, uh, apologize with him that we cannot make uh, it work now uh, in this moment to have his uh, presentation um, uh, and his speech. Uh, but uh, we share, obviously, all the slides uh, with the participants. Uh, please connect uh, to uh, the International Urban Cooperation Program uh, and to our mailing list so that we can make you aware uh, of the ways in which we will share uh, the, the PowerPoints and the recordings. Uh, also, um, uh, if uh, there are still questions um, if that you would have to all our speakers, uh, feel free to uh, present them in the chat, which is still open for a couple of minutes, or in follow-up by email. Uh, we will try to channel them to the speakers uh, that you address and make sure that there is also some response coming from them. Um, I would very much like to uh, thank all our speakers, those that could speak up and those that could not speak up, uh, for sharing their experiences. Uh, we will for sure continue to uh, work um, uh, on uh, the uh, sharing of experiences, potentially in an improved uh, technical format, uh, and we will definitely take due note also uh, of the experiences made with this first webinar of the International uh, Urban Cooperation Program. Um, we would like to thank all participants for your interest, and we do hope that you will stay in contact with us and potentially make use of the opportunity uh, that is presented through the International Urban Cooperation and the city pairing that is offered. Uh, that said, um, wherever you are, be it uh, in, in which part of the world ever, uh, some are in the morning time, some in the evening time, we are in the middle of the day here uh, in Europe. Uh, so have a good uh, rest of the day and a good working week in front of you. We do hope you stay in touch. Thank you very, very much.